While most of Edinburgh is just waking up, ten of the world's most talented young racing drivers are relying on their own power as they run round Arthur's Seat, the extinct volcano which sits in the middle of the Scottish capital. Sprint! Come on, push yourselves! Push, 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 push! Come on, don't stop! Keep it up! It may be early and bitterly cold, but the training is tough and intended to replicate as closely as possible what these athletes will face in competitive motorsport. From cold to hot and the university's heat chamber with temperatures in excess of 40 degrees Celsius combined with high humidity levels. Well, it's a very competitive sport and these drivers have come from quite literally all over the world. They've been nominated originally by their local governing body. They have been to selection events in their region and they have won those selection events and thereby they get their place in the Young Driver Excellence Academy. They've shown talent and potential but also they are at a level in the sport at which that talent and potential is already starting to turn into results on the track. Winning races is in large part down to the skill of the driver but increasingly it's physical and psychological preparations like this which give drivers the edge on the track. Tony Turner and Hugh Richards from the University's Institute of Sport, PE and Health Sciences at Murray House are supervising this session. I've got some students from the Performance Psychology programme here who are master's students uh, and they've just finished a course on stress coping and control. Clearly of course we've got these guys in the heat chamber and that is a form of stress and managing hydration strategies or managing behaviour so you limit the extent to which you begin to accumulate heat through a racing day, these are coping behaviours. You know, you plan them in advance, you practice using them, and when you go to a competition, they should start to become second nature. But that's stress and coping. So for students who are studying the theories behind this and talking about how it might happen in practice, to come into an environment where you're working with real performers suddenly makes all of that theoretical and dry lectures make an awful lot of sense. For the drivers, you know, they're in their race cars and their temperatures can get up to, you know, 50 degrees. So here we're basically showing them that your heart rate stays high when it's that warm. So then they have the added pressures of stress and anxiety, which increases their heart rate. So this is showing them that the more fit that they are, the better they can withstand the temperatures. So and then for me, it's what I'll be doing with athletes, whether it's drivers or baseball players, rugby players. So it's all the hands-on that we can get is helpful. After a gruelling hour of exercise, the drivers undergo a series of tests, assessing their ability to make quick, accurate decisions while working under difficult conditions. Yeah, the fitness and all the stuff, the nutrition, everything became such a big part of motorsports and racing more than it had been earlier before, like 10, 15, 20 years ago. It, was, it didn't play any role at all. Some had good fitness, others didn't care about it. And me today, it's like 40% of the whole package of being a racing driver. You need the fitness and you need to eat healthy and you need to, to do all the right stuff. This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh.